What's up, everybody? Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Valorant video. And in this video, we're going to be doing Iron versus Radiant, the do's and don'ts, because there's some strategies that will work in high elo, like Immortal Plus, but they won't always work in low elo, and vice versa. So we got to break it all down, so you're not trying to incorporate strategies that won't work to help you climb where you're at. So we're going to do all that, but the Game Leap website's the best place to just absolutely pop off. We have helped so many people climb and surpass their limits in Valorant, and you can too. Do yourself a favor and go check it out right now, down below. So first off, we're gonna go with the don't do, or the strategies that would work in high elo, but will not work in low elo. And basically anything under the diamond rank is what I'm talking about, but there's various players that will respect it more as you climb up, so it's important that it's more of a spectrum rather than a yes or no. Now, here's things that high rank players will do that probably will not work unless you're in high elo. The first one is crouching to dodge headshots. This is something that is done fairly often where you know someone's tucked in a corner, so you swing it pre-crouch and you do this because the enemy has perfect cross their placement and when they go and try to shoot you, they're gonna whiff, right? Because their crosshair is not appropriate. And actually crouching in general can be better in certain situations when enemies are always aiming head level. But of course, this only works assuming that the enemy is properly aiming, has proper crosshair placement, and there's still a whole bunch of disadvantages to crouching in the first place, like the fact that you're not gonna be as mobile. But it is really important to understand that a lot of times when you do headshot alteration, whether you're standing like slightly on a box to elevate your head hitbox, or actually crouching in a situation where maybe you wouldn't normally crouch to throw off an enemy's crosshair placement, that's gonna work better against better opponents and worse against worse opponents, which is kind of weird, but it's just the way it is. Now the next thing that will work the higher in elo you go, but will not work in lower elos is fake flashes or baits of any kind. So a great example of this is like throwing out a sky flash that you don't pop and you peek, right? This could be really, really cool to do when you're up against players that will literally turn on this flash or try to shoot the flash and uh, you're not actually planning to pop it, you just peek them and you kill them or even throwing out like a long delayed KO flash that you peek first. So an enemy will react to it and you're peeking with the intent to kill them and then de-peek before the flash pops. That's not gonna work against enemies that do not respect the flash. They will honestly probably get flashed by pop flashes far more than you trying to fake something. And so what this means for you is it's often better for you to practice just pop flashing, pop flashing corners, pop flashing out of smokes and being proactive rather than adding in mix ups because those mix ups rely on the enemy actually responding in a way that is appropriate or quick in reaction or correct. And that's not always gonna be the case depending on what rank you're at. So that is my advice for you here. Now the next thing is rotations and this is something that you see often, right? You go to a site, maybe you get two kills, they get two kills, you see all three of the enemies are on the site and then you try to rotate off, right? This is like a try to two strategy in high rank and in pro play, but it doesn't always work when you're playing in ranked. And let me give you a perfect example. In a lot of the VOD reviews that I've watched, a situation will happen where there'll be five people or maybe four people on the attacker side and they get some kills, the enemy has three people left or two people left, and those people are on site. Someone calls for the rotation, right? But the problem with low rank, this happens so often, is people don't freaking listen. They don't listen to how to rotate and they don't rotate safely. They either whip out, you know, turn around and start running or they're not holding angles as they leave or they stay too long. And during the rotation, more than like two or three people die. This happens very, very often. And oftentimes, it is just better to work together. Like if your rotations are not working at all, it's better to just take the 4v2 on site. Sure, the enemies are there. Sure, you're gonna have to clear them, but at least you'll be able to trade out together rather than trying to force a rotate and your teammates are just not rotating safely. You end up losing a situation where if you would've just took the guaranteed fight, you would win. Now, I'm not saying that that's the right way to play, but your teammates are not always gonna rotate correctly depending on the elo that you're at. And of course, you're gonna have to evaluate your teammates as you play. Are they capable of rotating correctly? Every time you rotate, are you all dying? What's happening? That will help you decide whether or not you should rotate or not, depending on the situation. 
Now, the last thing that you cannot do in lower elo, it works in higher elo, and it's something that you pretty much need to do in higher elo, but in low elo, it just doesn't work that often, is very delayed rotations. So, the idea of playing default, baiting, putting some pressure here, putting a lurker on one side, rotating, hitting another, because rotations are so bad, default play is bad, and Russians are more common, oftentimes you can't delay a rotation. So for example, when you're playing in Immortal, you oftentimes, even if the enemy is really active in the default zones towards a site, you can't just leave your site. Because what often happens is enemies will create some pressure, use some abilities. If you leave your site, then an enemy could easily lurk up in a position to where when they rotate off and re like retake a different site and your team has to retake, now an enemy is lurked up in a position where it's very hard for you to expect that they're there, or you have to clear so much because an enemy is tucked in a very aggressive position, typically can get a kill or multiple kills and just completely roll you. And that's why you need information across the map, right? But if you rotate like that, let's say in gold, in situations where the enemy team is just rushing and rushing and rushing and rushing, you're gonna be playing a retake simulator every single game. And of course, this is another one that you evaluate based on how your team is doing over time. But it is important to understand that because all this other stuff is done poorly, rushing is gonna be more common and delayed rotation is going to be a lot worse than it would be in the higher ranks. Now, I did talk about things that you shouldn't do in low rank that you can do or is really good in higher rank or you see streamers do it or you see pro players do it, but that's not necessarily stuff that you should emulate. Let's talk about the things that you should do. What is more powerful when all those things are not in place, all those fundamentals are not in place. The first thing is just flanking. Flanking is really, really strong. When enemies full rush, when they don't actively guard flank, when they're not consistent at guarding flank, when they don't set up their utility properly, or if you have some ability to override some sort of anti-flank, like a smoke, for instance, for a chamber trap, you find that chamber trip, you smoke it off as jet, and all of a sudden, you know, the enemies are not watching. They don't imagine the idea that you could do this, you're behind them, you typically get one or two kills. Flanking is incredibly powerful. Now, it's important to understand that the more you flank, enemies are going to catch on to it, right? But it's overall a strategy that players play around a lot less, players default a lot less, they're not watching for flank, and typically you can steal many rounds off the back of flanking before enemies will even be aware of it or do anything about it. Now, the next thing is lurking, and this is something that is incredibly powerful. The lower in rank you go, the more powerful this strategy is, where all you do is you play, let's say you're playing in a three stack, right? When your enemy go and they hit A on Haven and you just lurk up mid, you wait a second, you lurk up mid, you wait and you listen. And if any enemy just run through and make noise, which so many enemies will do, you get to get a free kill because enemies aren't diligent with clearing certain areas, watching as they rotate, watching as they rotate back to their team. You're going to be able to get a free kill on a lurk. All of a sudden, the enemies are afraid of a flank. And it's even better a lot of the time to get that lurk kill and then just dip out, secure that kill. Enemies are going to be aware of you potentially being on the flank. They're going to play a lot more passive. And lurking is incredibly powerful. And players don't even respect a lurk. And the coolest thing about lurking is you are often going to be killing. In fact, you should never even try to engage an enemy that is ready for you. You're always trying to kill someone in the side of the head when they're running with their knife out, when they don't expect you there. You're basically trying to get a kill where the enemy just doesn't have counterplay. Like they're not taking a fair gunfight with you. And uh, it's a great way to put some pressure. But of course, if you're an entry or if your team is not able to put enough pressure to force enemies to rotate, you gotta play with your team. It's another thing that you're gonna have to kind of change from game to game. Now, another thing that you can take advantage of is there's a lot less discipline in clearing corners, cubbies with utility or just, you know, clearing it with the rifle. So for instance, if you have played, let's say on defense on bind, U-Haul over and over again, you play it over, over and over again. At some point, you put in a mix up where you go, you push forward and you tuck into the aggressive cubby. If you haven't been there for three rounds, it is very unlikely that enemies will properly clear that cubby. And this is not necessarily something that is true at the higher ranks. In fact, it's not because an immortal player goes through a certain set of clears, like almost every time. They won't always deal with their abilities, but They'll clear this angle, they'll clear that angle, they'll clear that cubby, and they'll kind of systematically do it, and they'll do it regardless of what you do. They always do it. Every single time they do it. And if you ever play aggressively, it's less likely to work because they're still disciplined in the way they're clearing. But a lot of times, the lower in rank you go, they, they're based on habits, right? 
Maybe they won't even clear that cubby the first time, but if you play there one time, then the next time they'll clear, and the next time they'll clear, and then maybe you clear it four more times, and then eventually they won't clear it anymore. And that's something that you can use and abuse a lot. Basically, there's a lot less discipline with all of these strategies in the lower ranks, the lower you are, so you can take advantage of that lack of discipline by being in a place where enemies don't expect you. And that's the same thing with lurking, that's the same thing with flanking, which is with mix-ups as well. Now, outside of that, it's most important to really focus and hone your mechanical skill. In the lower ranks, a lot of times, strategies are very difficult to incorporate because players act so different from one another. There's no consistency. Players will do the most bizarre, random things. And outbraining an enemy where you can't even understand what they're thinking or what they're trying to do is incredibly difficult because that's ultimately what happens when I talk about those habits, those proper habits that get built in. You can assume certain things about how an enemy would react. When would they peak a spike if you tap it? How they will rotate? What they're gonna do in this situation? You can predict things and then you can try to make a strategy to outplay, right? But the lower in rank you go, the more random shit is. The more hard it is to predict what's going on. And that's why mechanical skill is so important and it's something that you really need to focus on more than anything. I did give you some strategies that you could utilize, but at the end of the day, mechanical skill is where it's fucking at, and that's what you should be trying to develop more than anything. Of course, we have a lot of mechanical guides on this channel, as well as even more advanced stuff and drills and like an entire course on the Game Leap website. So if you want to pop off and master mechanics, do yourself a favor and go check it out right now down below.